Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Joey, you're watching Vegas D-Tech. Hope you guys are doing well. I got another good one for you guys today. I have obtained a list of uh, the top water users in Las Vegas. This was covered by our local news, Channel 13, by Darcy Spears and by Channel 8. And uh, you know, I thought this was re really relevant because this is not the first time that they've done this. They've done this before. And I'm gonna actually show you We've got we've got the residential we've got residential list here of uh, not residential but actual commercial, and then we've got actual residential names, okay. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give you the actual list that you can actually view for yourself. I don't want to uh, necessarily re report and bring out the names of the personal people that are on this list. It is public information, but in lieu of trying to be professional. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to say their personal names. You guys can take a look at it, and I'm going to show you exactly how to link to it. All right, so anyways, guys, before we get started, if you guys like this type of material, these walk and talks that I do for you and with you, if you could just do me a kindness, man, give me a like if you like this material. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, share this information with your family and friends and colleagues. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get with this report. This list, which 13 Investigates has exclusively right now, includes data from the Las Vegas Valley Water District, Henderson, and North Las Vegas for both commercial and residential properties. We begin our series of stories tonight with which businesses are using the most water, and we noticed one big change from last year. The most recent available data is from 2021. We'll compare that to 2020, a pandemic year when golf courses used the most water in Las Vegas. In 2021, that changed with casino properties taking over the top spots. We're at a point where every single drop matters. Kyle Rowrink is executive director of the Great Basin Water Network. There's a lot of value in reporting on this list because across the West, across the nation, we need to have a conversation about how we're pricing water and how we're using water, especially for aesthetic purposes. The Venetian is the biggest Las Vegas Valley Water District commercial user. It went from the number four spot in 2020 to number one in 21, an increase of more than 78 million gallons. Mandalay Bay is number two, followed by Caesars Palace at number three. The water use at Caesars went up more than 200 million gallons year to year. Wynn holds the number four spot. Angel Park Golf Club rounds out the top five. In North Las Vegas, Aliante Golf Club is the biggest water user, followed by Shadow Creek, an exclusive golf course owned by MGM Resorts. NV Energy's generating plant on Alexander Road rounds out the top three in NLV. And we've saved the worst for last. The biggest commercial water user in 2021 and 2020 is Lake Las Vegas. Vegas in Henderson. They used more than 1.3 billion gallons of water last year. That's 126.7 million more than the year before. What purpose does does Lake Las Vegas really serve? You know, largely it uh, it's it's for aesthetics. It's for uh, you know a, a very bourgeois community, a very upper crust uh, community. And you know, as as we all uh, as we all see Lake Mead crashing, and you see the the stability at a place like Lake Las Vegas, you have to wonder if there are two different sets of rules. Uh, for uh, for folks. The city of Henderson says it stopped supplying raw water to Lake Las Vegas on July 1st when Lake Mead dropped so low that the basic water company intake could no longer pump water. The city statement goes on to say Lake Las Vegas was aware of this likelihood and put additional raw water in the lake before the intake ceased operations. The city of Henderson is working with Lake Las Vegas and regional partners to find alternative temporary and permanent solutions to provide water while serving the greater good of Henderson. Join me tomorrow for our continuing coverage to find out which homeowners use the most water in our valley. You can read the full list right now at ktnv.com slash water users. Darcy Spears, 13 Investigates. All right, guys. So if you come on to my channel right here, and if you just go down here to where uh, I have the description, you'll actually see this link down here that I'll have set up for you that says ktnb.com. That's our news channel here, okay? Should be channel 8. 
just click on it there you go actually this is 13 so KTNV uh, channel 13 and all you'll do here is you'll just uh, scroll down top residential water users revealed all right so anyways just scroll down because we're just trying to get to the report you'll see it right here about midway it says click here to see the full list click on that and it should take you to a PDF file right here we go so you're gonna have the Las Vegas Valley water district commercial water users you're gonna have all the casinos lined up here and the ones that use the most water you're gonna see right here so when you see this 481,492 you got to multiply that by 1,000 gallons, man. So you're talking about 481 million gallons. Mandalay Bay, 478 million gallons. And you're going to see how many millions of gallons these properties, these are resorts on the Strip, and then you'll see properties as well all up and down the Strip lined up on here. And you'll see just how much water in the millions of gallons that these uh, resorts use. And then if you scroll down here, it's going to come down to Las Vegas Valley Water District residential users. Now, I didn't want to actually say these names of these people or so forth like that. It's on a list. If you guys want to look at it, they're here. You're going to come in here. You're going to actually look, and you're going to see names of people on here that I, I didn't even really even realize that these people lived in Las Vegas, but they do, you know, interesting. But uh, come down this list, and you'll see all kinds of uh, business owners, you know, presidents of CEOs of companies. You're gonna have uh, you're gonna have actual you know entertainers down here. You're gonna have athletes and so forth, man. Just the list goes on and on. And what I don't understand is why in res if if this is your residential house, why are you guys using so much water at your house? You know what I mean? It's not a business. This is just your house. But the list is sitting right here. And then at the bottom of Las Vegas, you're going to have commercial water users uh, for Henderson. And you're going to have the list right here showing the number one uh, user of water in Henderson. And it's listed right there in the, in the billions here. 1,342,000,000 gallons, you know, in golf courses and so forth. And you're going to have Henderson's uh, list of residential these are all the names of the people that that are residential people that live in the community. And there's a lot of people in here, man, that, uh, you know, figureheads, presidents, like I said, uh, uh, recording artists, athletes. They're, they're all listed in here, guys. So if you're interested in actually taking a look at this list for yourself, this is how you guys get to it. We are in a tier two water shortage right now, a tier two federal water cut now i don't know if people don't understand what that means i mean how could you not how could you live in las vegas and not know what those things mean you know but hey you know just just for the benefit of the doubt for those individuals that live here and are on and are on this list of water users i'm just going to go ahead and 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 put this out there for you just in case you don't know and if you don't know then possibly you just don't care all right so anyways guys tier two water water shortage list we only have one more tier tier three okay there is no tier four so we are dancing with the devil on hot coals here now i'm not trying to be a a, a, a hater of green oh my god if there's grass these people are wasteful or if i see a sprinkler oh my god there's, there's water over there, man. These people are being wasteful. Not so. What I'm trying to say is that when we're being asked to conserve as a community, I expect everybody to be on board with it, okay? Not just the little people, all right? Why, why I don't understand, like, why, why, all these, uh, why all these restrictions and conservation efforts uh, need to be done by the small people. When I say the small people, I'm just talking about the average person that lives in, in these typical homes here. You know, these typical homes here, they're like 300,000 to $400,000 homes. But yeah, guys, when we talk about conservation, it's something that everybody needs to abide by, right? I mean, look, when you go to a school zone and it says 15 miles an hour, there, there, there ain't nothing below it that says, uh, except for the privileged or the wealthy. Doesn't say that, does it? As far as I see that sign says, that sign says it's 15 mile per hour zone and that's for everybody. And the way I see it is that 
this water conservation, it's for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're an entertainer or an athlete or a CEO or, or, a, or a Fortune 500 business owner. It doesn't matter. If you're part of the community, then you are a part of the conservation efforts and you need to abide by the same rules as everybody else. Okay, the, the biggest users of water are the resorts. And, uh, you know, my dad used to always tell me, don't come to me with a problem unless you have a solution, okay? So instead of sitting here and ranting and crying about resorts using water, there's nothing that can really be done about it. Because when I've actually researched these resorts, the majority of these resorts that have water attractions, they were here before the water problem, okay? So we're talking about pre-2000. And all of these resorts right here have been, they all came in in the 90s, you know, late 80s, early 90s. And they brought with them, you know, their water attractions. And so you can't just tell these people to cut off their water because it would just make their attraction look like a hole. And Las Vegas is not going to allow it. The resorts are not going to, what, I mean, in extreme measures, you're just going to tell them to, to cut the fountains off, to shut off their, to shut off their waterfalls. They're just not going to do it, man. It would make, this is Las Vegas that we're talking about. The city is not gonna force them to do that and the resorts aren't going to do that because then it would just make, you know, for the tourism business, the tourists are gonna come by and see their place looking all with dry pools, dry fountains. And it would just, it would just, the whole appearance of the business would look terrible. So I've said to be fair, what is the solution? What solutions do I have for these casinos and uh, resorts? And I would say, you know what? Whenever there's flash floods out here, do you notice that the strip automatically just gets flooded out? Yeah, so if the strip was able to take the water that floods on the strip, r capture it, run it to off-site tanks, and off-site tanks have that water clarified, right? And then use those water for actual attractions. They're not drinkable water. They're not made for human consumption. Use that water for irrigation. Use that water for your fountains. Use that water for, you know, you're just, your, your pools or, or waterfalls. Use that. And at least you can say that all the water that you're using in those fountains, they were procured through uh, rainwater and just captured water. I don't think that the community would have anything to cry about if that was the case. For instance, right, if it, if, if, if it rained really bad through here and all this water was coming down the street and collecting in the gullies here, if these people here wanted to come out there and have sump pumps and stick their sump pump into the gully and suck all that water out and fill a pond in their backyard, I don't think that the community would have a problem with that. It's nuisance water that's flowing into the streets, it's pulling down the street here and flooding out the intersection. And if people wanna go ahead and tap into that water and use it in a pond, I don't really think that the community would have anything bad to say about that. So that, that's just kind of my take on it, is that use, it doesn't rain very often here, okay? So maybe they wouldn't deem that as being financially you know, sound to go ahead and go through and put all this money into capturing ground, uh, capturing rainwater because it doesn't hardly rain. But when it does, oh my God, there is so much water available and they could just have a year's worth of water hold up in those tanks to be used uh, for all of their attractions, okay? So with the resorts, man, there's really not a whole lot that can be done because like I said, the resorts, they were here pre-drought, okay? So when I say pre-drought, I mean pre-2000. Um, and no resorts, no new resort should be allowed a permit to have any kind of water attraction, especially right now in a tier two shortage. That's just, that's just my opinion on it. That's my take. And uh, yeah. So guys, you know, I still work, I still work for a living. Okay. And I work in a restaurant and I'm still injected into the bloodstream of society. So it's very cool that I, that I have this opportunity because I talk to a lot of people every day, either coworkers or actual uh, you know, you know, guests that come into my restaurant and we talk about water a lot, you know, and, and where they're at. And all I'm trying to do is actually bring awareness 
to uh, these people here about the water and I asked them, are you guys engaged on it? Some of my coworkers called me up the other day and they told me, oh my God, Joey, I know you're doing you know reports on the water. We just got a report from Channel 13 News that said that we only have 40 days of water left. What's going on? And they're just freaked out and panicked and I'm like, hold up. I haven't heard anything like that. I'm pretty sure that if that was the case, you would have a public service broadcast bulletin to say something went down. They're like, yeah, Channel 13 News is saying that there's 40 days left because somehow the, the water got polluted with toxins and that, uh, yeah, we only have 40 days of water left. Yeah, check it out. So I went ahead and checked it out. The city of Las Vegas is dangerously close to running out of water and is now asking people to limit their water use. News 13's Gabe Chavez spoke with one woman who says what the city is asking of them just isn't possible. Gabe? Jessica, people in Las Vegas knew they were running out of water, but the situation is worse than they thought. Now, families like the Johnson family are scrambling to figure out how to conserve. We only have less than 40 days of water, so it's a bit uh, worrisome. Flooding in the Hermit's Peak Calf Canyon burn scar areas has polluted the city of Las Vegas' water. We have 63 million gallons of treatable water. That 63 million gallons is equivalent to approximately 40 days of water for the community. But the actual news that they got, as you can see, it was for uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico, right? So once I told them, don't worry about it, it's not for us, it's for Las Vegas, New Mexico, then all of a sudden they turned around and they said, oh, oh, thank God, I can, I, I can get back to my egregious water uh, usage and waste again. You see what I mean? So it's like, wait a minute, one minute you didn't believe in it, the next minute you saw the news and the news looked like, uh, oh my God, we're down to 40 days worth of water and immediate panic. And then when you found out that it was a false alarm and it was actually from another neighborhood, then you automatically went back to your calm, peaceful, restful, oh yeah, water's cool. And I'm right back to the way I was before. The average household, just the average neighborhood household here, say a four bedroom, three bedroom home, the typical home out here, these people use, or we use, around 120,000 gallons a year, okay? But the news says that the typical egregious residential household user uses 100 times that much water for their residential usage. Hello and thanks for joining us tonight live at 6. I'm Trisha Keen and some are working to conserve water, but officials say others are simply using too much, draining Las Vegas of an increasingly scarce resource. And tonight, 13 Chief Investigator Darcy Spears continues with her revealing look at the top water users here in our valley. Yesterday, we told you about the top commercial water users in the valley. Tonight, we focus on water where you live. Residential properties in Las Vegas, Henderson and North Las Vegas. You might guess those who use the most water are a who's who of Las Vegas, from the super rich to superstars. The vast majority of those residential highest water users are using more water in a single month than the average household uses in an entire year. You heard that right. More water in one month than most of us use in a year. We find that water use to be extremely egregious. Um, and that type of water use really can no longer continue in our community. Bronson Mack with the Las Vegas Valley Water District says the average home uses about 120,000 gallons of water a year. The highest residential water user in Las Vegas consumes over 100 times that amount. Let's dive into the list. The most recent data is from 2021. Sitting in the top spot, the nearly 16-acre property in Spanish Gates with ties to the Sultan of Brunei. That home used over 13 million gallons last year, nearly a million more than was used in 2020. The property manager declined to comment, citing a non-disclosure agreement. What we're seeing throughout the Las Vegas Valley uh, is that those who have a lot of green in their bank accounts still have a lot of green uh, in their yards and in their landscaping. Kyle Rohrink, executive director with the Great Basin Water Network, says it's time for a change in mindset. We have to remember uh, that despite all that man has done uh, in the Las Vegas Valley, uh, it's, we're still a part of the Mojave Desert, but we're growing plant species, whether it be grass or certain types of uh, ornamental flowers. 
that no aren't originally <clears throat> they aren't originally from Las Vegas. So and they're very water intensive because they come from somewhere else. A little rounding out the top five residential water users is this mansion in Henderson belonging to the founder of eBay, Pierre Omidyar. The nearly 12 acre property used 9.3 million gallons, over 75 times more than the average household. We tried to contact Omidyar for comment through his foundation, but have not heard back. I think one of the number one reasons why people use so much water is because we price it at, at such a low rate. Water authorities are on the verge of changing that. The Las Vegas Valley Water District is preparing to implement an excessive use charge that will be geared toward the top 10% of our water users here in Southern Nevada, charging them additional cost uh, because of that excess water use. One homeowner who may be hit by that fee Mike Tyson, his home in Henderson knocked out 2.8 million gallons last year, nearly double what he used in 2020, moving him from the number 30 spot up to number 14 in the city of Henderson. Yeah, my one of my biggest concerns and gripes here is that when we are asked as a community to conserve water, it seems that all of the small little people go through all these extents to conserve water and then when you get a list like this that shows all these people that are on this list, and it just really seems that when it comes down to the uh, extreme water wasters, the only way that you can get their attention, I mean, you can't really get their attention in just telling them, hey, there's a water shortage, you guys need to chill out and cut back like everybody else. That doesn't do it for them. And then maybe you can jump the price up on water and make them pay a higher water bill Sometimes that gets their attention, but even that is not enough to uh, get them to pay attention. And it just seems like the last straw is what the local news is doing. And it's by putting your public information about how much water you're actually wasting out to the community where the community can see it, they do public shaming. And sometimes public shaming is the only way that you can actually get you know, wealthy individuals to pay attention uh, to what is going on and to get on board. Now, somebody that has done that is somebody that I've waited on at my restaurant before, and that is David Copperfield. David Copperfield was on this list, high on, the list, on this list, and I believe he was at one point, he was like an, on the top 10, and uh, he turned around and changed it up and he dropped himself to number 52. So, you know, he actually cares enough to drop from a top 10 water user in the residential list and drop all the way down to 52. When you guys get to see the names of some of these people on this list, you're gonna be shocked because I never even knew half these people that are on this list actually lived in this community. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I use their stuff like the guy that owns uh, eBay. I use eBay all the time, but I didn't know that he had a mansion out here and he happens to be one of the biggest water consumers out here in, in Vegas, man. So guys, what I wanna say is that if we are consuming 25% less water with all of these people on this list, wasting millions of gallons of water, what if all these people turned it around and stopped using all this water, stopped wasting all this water? What is our percentage of actual conservation gonna be at that point? Would it be just unbelievable? Well, I would, lo I would hope so. And uh, guys, with that, that's all I've got for you folks today. It is hot as heck. I mean, 106 degrees, and I got all these cars driving by me with their AC on. They're just like, who is this loco crazy guy out here walking around with a GoPro in 106 degree heat and uh, trying to get these reports out. But anyways, man, that's all I have for you. If you guys can do me a kindness, if you like these little walk and talk reports and you found any of this information beneficial and useful, do me a kindness, guys. Uh, give me a thumbs up, like and subscribe, leave a comment down below, guys. I do read all of these comments. I try to respond to them as much as possible. And uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, we, we are planning to go back out to Hoover Dam here in the next couple of days and uh, get some good tight shots of anything that's different from the last time that we've been out there. And uh, I plan to get that video up to you. So anyways, I'm gonna get back, edit this video, get it out to you guys tonight. And uh, I hope to see you guys soon. You guys be well. This is Joey. You're watching Vegas D-Tech. I'll see you guys here on the next upload. You guys be well now. Take care.